Helicopter Flying Handbook 11-5 Helicopter Emergencies and Hazards When dealing with a stuck neutral or right pedal situation, the recommended landing profile involves executing a low-power approach culminating in a running or roll on landing. The approach angle is described as shallow to normal, bringing the helicopter approximately 2 to 3 feet above the intended landing area. The goal is to maintain a minimum airspeed for directional control, preventing the nose from continuing to yaw to the right. Upon reaching the intended touchdown area at the appropriate height, the pilot adjusts the throttle as needed to counteract the right yaw effect. Throttle reduction is coordinated with an increased collective, resulting in a smooth touchdown with some forward ground speed. If the nose is to the left of the landing heading, a slight increase in collective or aft cyclic may be applied to align the nose for touchdown. The decision to land or go around must be made before any throttle reduction. Maintaining airspeed slightly above translational lift helps prevent excessive yawing to the right during a go-around. After landing and during the sliding or rolling phase, the helicopter's heading can be controlled using a combination of collective, cyclic, and throttle. To turn the nose to the right, the collective can be raised or aft cyclic applied, with a potential increase in throttle if not already at full open. Conversely, to turn the nose to the left, Lowering the collective or applying forward cyclic may be accompanied by a decrease in throttle if it's not already at flight idle. Another critical consideration in helicopter operations is loss of tail rotor effectiveness or LTE. Loss of tail rotor effectiveness involves an uncommanded, rapid yaw towards the advancing blade, which can lead to catastrophic consequences if not addressed promptly. It's essential to recognize that loss of tail rotor effectiveness results from an aerodynamic interaction between the main rotor and tail rotor, not a mechanical failure. Some helicopter types may be more susceptible to loss of tail rotor effectiveness due to the challenges of meeting the certification standards for tail rotor thrust demanded by pilots. Understanding the dynamics of loss of tail rotor effectiveness involves acknowledging the compromises made in helicopter design. Comparing the size and horsepower demands of an airplane propeller to a helicopter's tail rotor illustrates the delicate balance. The tail rotor is crucial for counteracting main rotor torque during lift-off, but environmental forces can challenge the helicopter's stability, highlighting the inherent complexity and vulnerability of these aircraft. Understanding loss of tail rotor effectiveness or LTE is crucial for helicopter pilots. More than just knowing its definition, pilots must grasp how and why loss of tail rotor effectiveness happens, learn how to prevent it, and, if encountered, understand corrective measures. It's akin to knowing the capabilities and limitations of the aircraft. Professionalism is emphasized in adhering to aircraft limitations, just as one wouldn't knowingly exceed the maximum gross weight. Flight manuals are designed for safety, and disregarding procedures or exceeding limitations can lead to severe consequences, including damage or fatalities. Respect for manuals is parallel to understanding aerodynamic conditions, as pushing flight envelopes beyond limits can result in catastrophic outcomes. Loss of tail rotor effectiveness is an aerodynamic condition stemming from a control margin deficiency in the tail rotor. It affects all single rotor helicopters using a tail rotor. While the design of main and tail rotor blades and the tail boom assembly influences loss of tail rotor effectiveness characteristics, it doesn't eliminate the phenomenon entirely. Translational lift, aerodynamics of flight, affects both main and tail rotors. As the tail rotor encounters translational thrust, it becomes aerodynamically efficient, producing more anti-torque thrust. This increased thrust prompts a left yaw, requiring right pedal correction from the pilot. Pilots can identify when the tail rotor reaches translational thrust and should be aware of the typical pedal requirements for different flight conditions. Loss of tail rotor effectiveness occurs when the airflow through the tail rotor is disrupted, altering the angle or speed at which air passes through the rotating blades. An effective tail rotor relies on stable and undisturbed airflow for a consistent anti-torque reaction. Changes in pitch or angle of attack alter thrust, and extreme imbalances can lead to the loss of effective control in the yawing plane, resulting in loss of tail rotor effectiveness. In essence, pilots must not only comprehend the theoretical aspects of loss of tail rotor effectiveness but also apply this knowledge actively in their flying making informed decisions to avoid or correct this aerodynamic condition. Loss of tail rotor effectiveness or LTE susceptibility in helicopters is influenced by various external factors, contributing to alterations in tail rotor thrust. The primary factors include airflow and downdraft from main rotor blades, where the downdraft interacts with the entering airflow into the tail rotor assembly. Additionally, main blade vortices, developed at the tips of the main rotor blades, can enter the tail rotor disc. 
turbulence and other natural phenomena also play a role by affecting the airflow around the tail rotor. A high power setting, associated with a large main rotor pitch angle, induces significant main rotor blade downwash, creating more turbulence. Slow forward airspeed, especially at speeds where translational lift and translational thrust are undergoing changes, leads to varying airflow direction and speed around the tail rotor. The airflow relative to the helicopter is critical in loss of tail rotor effectiveness conditions. The worst case scenario involves the relative wind within plus and minus 15 degrees of the 10 o'clock position, generating vortices that can blow directly into the tail rotor. Weathercock stability, influenced by tailwinds from 120 degrees to 240 degrees such as left crosswinds, can cause high pilot workload. Tail rotor vortex ring state, occurring within the range of 210 degree to 330 degree, results in the development of the vortex ring state of the tail rotor. Combinations of these factors in a specific situation can demand more anti-torque than the helicopter can generate, leading to loss of tail rotor effectiveness in a particular environment. Certain flight activities pose a higher risk of loss of tail rotor effectiveness. For instance, sectors involved in powerline and pipeline patrol, low-speed aerial filming or photography, as well as those in the police and helicopter emergency medical services or AMS environments, often find themselves operating in low and slow situations over areas where determining precise wind speed and direction is challenging. It is crucial for pilots engaged in such activities to be aware of these factors and understand their aircraft's capabilities and limitations. This knowledge is essential for avoiding loss of tail rotor effectiveness, ensuring safe operations, and preventing potential accidents. Adhering to flight manuals, understanding aerodynamic conditions, and staying within specified limitations are paramount to the safety and reliability of helicopter operations. Exceeding limitations can lead to catastrophic consequences, emphasizing the need for respect and discipline in following established procedures. Additionally, recognizing the potential for LTE and knowing how to avoid and correct it are integral parts of a pilot's skill set, contributing to safer and more efficient helicopter flight. Understanding helicopter aerodynamics, especially phenomena like LTE or loss of tail rotor effectiveness, is a nuanced challenge. It's a mix of factors that pilots need to grasp, associate with specific situations, and, most importantly, learn to avoid. Picture this. Low and slow flight outside of ground effect, winds swirling around the 10 to 5 o'clock position, tailwinds toying with translational lift, low speed downwind turns, sudden power changes at low airspeeds, and navigating low speeds near physical obstructions. These combinations are the breeding ground for loss of tail rotor effectiveness. Pilots who venture into these scenarios should brace for the likelihood of encountering loss of tail rotor effectiveness. The crux is steering clear of compromising situations while being savvy enough to spot loss of tail rotor effectiveness onset. Early detection is the key, triggering immediate corrective actions. It's about regaining airspeed with forward cyclic, steering with right pedal and dialing down the collective to ease the high power demand on the tail rotor. Pilots should always set up maneuvers with enough height and space for recovery. Recognizing loss of tail rotor effectiveness and reacting promptly before losing control is the linchpin of safe recovery. Think of it as understanding the language of your helicopter, being fluent enough to preempt trouble, and acting decisively to avert disaster. Loss of tail rotor effectiveness knowledge is more than a safety measure, it's an empowerment tool. Whether making an approach or maneuvering, having the know how to go around or replan on the fly is the safest bet. Sadly, some pilots, misjudging their helicopter's limits and the aerodynamic situation, have unwittingly sent perfectly airworthy helicopters into auto-rotation towards disaster. Now, let's delve into a particular interference zone main rotor disc interference, happening between 285 to 315 degrees. Visualize winds at 10 to 30 knots from the left front thrusting the main rotor vortex into the tail rotor. This creates a turbulence hotspot for the tail rotor, especially during a right turn. As the main rotor vortex hits the tail rotor, there's a sudden reduction in thrust. Initially, the tail rotor thrust spikes due to increased AOA or angle of attack. To maintain the same turn rate, the pilot needs to apply right pedal pressure. But as the main rotor vortex moves past, the tail rotor angle of attack drops, thrust decreases, and right yaw acceleration kicks in. This unexpected thrust reduction, if not corrected swiftly, can spiral into an uncontrollable rotation. So, when you're in this interference zone, be ready. The reduction in tail rotor thrust can hit like a sudden gust, demanding quick left pedal input for recovery. 